En el programa de hoy tendremos al psicólogo deportivo John Murray. Cuando regresemos, conversaremos con el psicólogo John Murray. La conexión adecuada entre el tenis y la psicología tiene nombre y apellido, John Murray. Psicólogo de profesión y tenista por su amor a la raqueta, este estadounidense escribió un libro llamado Smart Tennis, tenis inteligente en su traducción al castellano, publicado hace pocos meses. En su libro recomendado por Lindsay Davenport, explica la importancia que tiene la concentración en el juego y la preparación mental para circuitos tan duros como los del ATP y la WTA. Dr. Murray, thank you very much. What is the main difference between working with a regular person and athlete? It's a lot more fun for one, Jose. I enjoy working with athletes a lot because what you're doing is you're taking people that are already healthy and you're helping them become super healthy and be performing better. Uh, in general counseling, oftentimes you're working with issues like depression and anxiety. You see a little bit less of that in sports. It's not really fun. <laughs> not as fun. I enjoy going out to matches too and watching people perform as opposed to just seeing them in my office. So I like to go out and work with them on the court. I see. What is the most common problem with tennis players? I think attention in any sport is a problem. So staying focused and being able to stay focused for a long period of time and to stay focused on the right thing too, not to lose focus is, is a really important factor there. The competitive pressure is what comes to mind right now to me. What is different from practicing and, and actually playing? It's, it's quite different. Both players are more intense and you're thinking more about the possible outcome, losing and winning. And so what you do is realize that nervousness is okay. I, I encourage everybody to be nervous. It's a great source of energy. But nervousness associated with negative thinking is bad. And so if we can just learn to be more positive, accept the fact that you're going to be a little excited, and just go through it. That's the most important thing. Accept the nerves, but enjoy it. Especially for the tennis player, you know. For you tennis have to keep so many hours on the court keep concentration. Do you have something, some strategy to do over there? There's lots of strategies. One of the things we try to help players do is to, number one, stay focused externally on what's going on on the court. For example, if a player is going to put a ball away, often they'll start looking maybe at the court rather than at the ball, or they'll start thinking about what's happening after the shot or what the score is. So helping them stay properly focused And, and really, I, I like to think of focusing as staying fascinated in the moment, really enjoying what you're doing so much that there's no point of being distracted. What do you teach someone to have a winner mentality? Having a winning mentality is really an issue of confidence. So it's, it's interesting. A lot of people think that you have to be born with confidence, that only the great players, only the Pete Sampras's of the world <laughs> have confidence. Is, it, is not true? Not true at all. In fact, I can take a recreational player or somebody who's trying to break the top hundred and show them that the way they think is completely controlled by them. So expecting the best is something everybody can achieve. To be number one in the world, any sport, mm -hmm. you have to born some special or you can uh, improve mentally? I, I think there has to be a ideal mixture of genetics, muscles, and also training, but at the same time mentally. I think it all has to come together to be number one. Only one person can be the best. You have to be very, very strong, right? That's right, but I think there are several people that could be number one in the world at any given time. And whoever it is, is I, I believe it's very much a mental factor. How, how focused they are, how confident they are. And uh, that's something that we try to constantly do, is help people constantly raise the level of their game through thinking and feeling. Are there mental exercises so that someone can learn to concentrate more on the court? Absolutely. One of the things I, I try to do is help people develop a, a ritual so that before they hit the return of serve, for example, they set their feet a certain way and the same way. Or before they serve, they bounce the ball the same number of times the same way exactly. It helps them get into a rhythm. At the same time, I help them say, but maybe silently rehearse a word to themselves like focus or concentrate. That's another way to stay focused. Uh, there are many techniques. How do you motivate an athlete who is emotionally drained? That's one of the toughest things because the mental game, uh, 
oftentimes falters when a person becomes physically drained. I like to think of actually the whole person. So if a person's physically fatigued, that's when they have to fight the hardest. Right now you can see a lot of um, special young, young guys, young kids. Mm -hmm. They have a lot too much pressure about the parents. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend over there, especially to, to the parents? Uh, the parents have gotten them here, but now it's time to lay off. Really have to be careful that you keep it a fun thing for the kids. The, the one thing I try to tell the parents is that motivation has to come from within the child. If it's coming from outside, it's never going to be a truly enjoyable experience, and the player will never become as good as they can possibly become. So they have to learn to back off and let the children develop on their own. So I think it's more important that we think in terms of life skills, using sport as a way to learn how to be successful in business after sport, and also to have fun and to enjoy themselves and develop. And also I hear you write a book, it's Smart Tennis. That's right, and it's not yet in, in Spanish. I hope that happens soon. I'm hoping for somebody to come forward. And, and in fact, I actually have one for you, Jose. This oh, is, thank you. I'd like to present this to you. Thank you, thank you, doctor. Okay. Smart Tennis. Me dijeron que es muy bueno. ¿Y saben quién, quién lo autorizó? Lindsay Davenport. Thank you for the book. Thank I you hope, for your time, doctor. I hope you enjoy it. De nada.